Django models, they are a critical part of any Django application that has database integration. And in this video, we're gonna move on to part two of the Django tutorial. And we're gonna look at models in this video, and we're gonna split this tutorial section into three videos. And in this video, we're gonna set up the database and we're gonna create our first Django models for the polls application. And we're also gonna look at database relationships, notably foreign keys. So let's dive in. Before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link to that below the video and thank you very much to everyone who's contributed. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. Now, if we go back to the Django application, this is gonna start where the last video left off. And that's where we had created our first Django view, this very simple view function that returns some text as an HTTP response. We're now gonna to go to another file and that's the models.py. So this is where you typically create the models that are tied to a Django application. In this case, it's the polls application. And remember that lives within a project called my site. Now at the end of the last video, we did run the migrate command in order to demonstrate Django's user functionality. We're going to delete this database here on the file system. So let's delete that just now. And we're gonna show how we can regenerate that from scratch. And then we're gonna create some Django models. Now, if you're not familiar with databases, they are basically a structured collection of data that is stored electronically. And typically you store that data in tables. And tables are 2D structures that contain rows with the data and columns. And each column has a data type and you can store a single value in the column. So a database table is quite similar in some ways to an Excel spreadsheet, for example. You have a set of columns and each column represents some data. And then you have rows that correspond to one observation of that data. Now, if you want to know more about this, check out the ORM series we did. That was a full series on Django database functionality. We're gonna go over the tutorial functionality now. Now it's worth saying to start with that Django is a database oriented framework. Django just works extremely well with relational databases. So if we go to settings.py, we're gonna find that there is a setting here called databases. And this is where we define the connection settings and the options for our database. When it comes to SQLite, it's the most simple database out there. It's simply a file that lives on your file system. And SQLite is actually included in the Python standard library, so we don't actually need to install any additional packages in order to get started. Now, when you actually have a real project, it's typical to use a more scalable database like Postgres. And some of the commonly used production databases include Postgres, MySQL and MariaDB, as well as Oracle and SQL Server. Now these are a little bit more complex. They require a server process and they require connection settings to be specified in the databases setting. And those servers could be running on the same machine as the Django application, or it could be a database that's running in the cloud, for example, on Amazon RDS. Now for this project, we're gonna stick with an SQLite database. So let's go back to the terminal here and we're gonna rerun a command we saw in the last video. That's python manage.py migrate. And when we run that command, notice that we're applying all these migrations, for example, from Django's auth app. So the way the migrate command works is that it takes all of the installed apps that you have in your project. And for each one of these apps, it's gonna to check to see if any migrations exist. And it's then gonna apply those migrations to the database if they've not already been done. So the first time you set up the database, any migrations from these apps, for example, in Django's auth app, are gonna be applied when the database tables are created. So that's the purpose of the migrate command. It's gonna take any changes to your database models, and it's gonna apply those changes to the underlying database tables. Now, in order to see the actual database in a more visual way, we're gonna open an app here called Beekeeper Studio. And this is an application that allows you to look at databases. What I'm gonna do is open this database that we have here on the file system. It's the db.sqlite3. I'm gonna open that in Beekeeper Studio. So we can create a new connection here and you can see all the different supported databases for this application. We're gonna select SQLite and then we provide the path to the database and we're now going to connect to that database. Once we've done that, we can see the entities in the database and these correspond to tables. And for example, Django's user table contains these columns, one for the password, for example, and that should always be hashed. And we also have fields for when the user last logged into the application, whether or not they're a super user, the username, and so on. So all the fields we need to capture the default user model in Django are stored in this table. And these are the tables that have been created from that initial migrate command for all of these installed apps. And one other example is the sessions table. If we go back here, we can see we have a Django session table and that contains three columns, one for the session key, another for the session data, and also expiry dates. So what we can do now is go back to the Django documentation and we've already done this database setup. We've seen the databases configuration in settings.py and we've covered the installed apps. 
Now let's go down and we've seen the migrate command as well. If we go down to the next section, we're going to look at creating models. Now, as it says here, models essentially define our database layout along with additional metadata. And that metadata can include things like the default ordering of objects from that table. And I think it's important to look at the philosophy here. So a model is a single definitive source of information about your data. It contains the essential fields and behaviors of the data that you're storing. And because it's the definitive source of data, this includes migrations. So unlike in Ruby on Rails and also in Laravel, migrations are entirely derived from your models file. So you don't need to worry about writing those migrations yourself. They can be derived from the model classes and we're gonna see an example of that in a second. So what we're gonna do for the poll app is create two models. One's gonna be question and the other one is gonna be choice. So the question is gonna have the text for the actual question as well as a publication date. And that question can have multiple choices. And the choice itself has two fields. That's gonna be the text for the choice and also a vote tally. And each choice is gonna be associated with a question. So essentially I want to copy these models and let's go back to the application here. And we're gonna open the new file of models.py and I'm gonna paste this code in. So let's go through what we have here. At the top, we have the import of Django's models module. And this is the module that contains a lot of functionality that we can use to define models and define the fields on a model and so on. And then we have the two classes here. One is question and the other is choice. And notice that these are both subclassing models.model. When you define a subclass of Django's model class, you are essentially telling Django that this should represent a database table. It should be treated as a Django model that can pull data out of the database and generally interface with that database. So for example, question here, this is a class, but because it's a Django model, it's going to be translated into a database table that represents the question. Now notice we have two fields here defined on the question. One is the question text, and that is an instance of models.car field. So a car field can be used to represent a column with a type of text. And when you define a car field, you have to have a max length that's gonna limit the length to a maximum of the number of characters we specify, in this case, 200. And below that, we have the publication date, and that is an instance of models.datetime field. And that's gonna create a column in the question table of the type datetime. And that means we can only store date times in that column in the table. Now, some fields have required arguments. For example, the car field has a required argument of max length. And for date time field, we don't have any required arguments, but we are passing this in here. And if we look at the signature of date time field, this is essentially the verbose name. We don't need to define that, but what it actually does is define a human readable label. And that can be used in forms and in the Django admin panel. So that's the purpose of this. It's a human readable label. So pub date is shortened, but it really means date published. So that's why we provide that here. And the second model is the choice model. So that model here has three fields. Notice the top field here, it's called question. And that is an instance of a foreign key. And the foreign key is essentially gonna create a connection between the choice table and the ID in the question table to which the choice belongs to. So the idea here is that a choice belongs to a question. So the row in the database needs to be associated with a question. And the way to do that in Django is to create a foreign key instance. And we tie it to the model that's provided as the argument here, in this case, the question model. And we have this on delete parameter that is a required parameter to the foreign key. And this tells Django what to do when the parent question is deleted from the database. So when that's deleted, models.cascade means that we're going to delete the child choices. And the reason for this is because if we have a question that refers to a question ID, let's say question number 10, if we were to remove question 10 from the database, this would be pointing to a question that does not exist in the question table, and that is not good. And there is this concept of referential integrity in databases. And this essentially means the quality of our data. We don't want to have foreign keys pointing to entities that do not exist in the other table. Now, as well as the question, we have a couple of extra fields, the choice text, this is another car field. And we also have the vote tally here, the number of votes. And because that's just a number of votes from users, that is an integer field. So we can store whole numbers, integers, inside an integer field here. And we also have float fields for floating point numbers and decimal fields for higher precision. So models has a lot of these field types defined, but this is gonna be sufficient for our two classes here, our two Django models. So what we can now do is go to the terminal and let's clear this out. 
And I'm going to go back to the Django documentation here. And if we scroll down, we're going to see how to activate these models. So the model code that we've added gives Django a lot of information. Django is then able to create a database schema, and it does that by creating SQL create table statements. And it also gives you a Python database access API for accessing the question and choice objects. And we'll see that in the next video. So what do we do now to actually get these models into database tables in the database? Well, we can run the migrate command, but that's not going to do anything at the moment. The reason for that is that we need to tell our project that the polls app is installed. So let's go back to our installed apps in settings.py. So that's in the project directory and it's settings.py. And notice here in installed apps, the only installed apps we have were the ones from Django that came out of the box. So we need to tell Django about our own polls application. So let's go back to the documentation. To include the app in our project, we need to add a reference to its configuration class in the installed apps setting. So the polls config class is gonna be in this apps.py file. So let's take a look at that, apps.py, and we can see the class here called polls config. We need to refer to that inside the installed apps setting. So notice this at the top here, this has been added and we need to add that now to our own settings. Let's go back to installed apps in settings.py and at the top of installed apps, we can paste that in. And Django now knows about our polls config and when we run the migrate command, it's gonna look for any migrations in the polls application and you can see that directory here. What we now need to do is make the migrations and this is another management command from Django. Let's go back to the documentation. It's the make migrations command and we can make the migrations for a specific app, in this case, the polls application. Let's go back to the terminal and paste that in. And notice in this migrations directory on the left-hand side, when we run this command, it's gonna generate a new migration file. This one here, it's the initial.py. And notice on the command line here, it's created the model question and the model choice. Now, when you run the make migrations command, you're essentially telling Django that you've made some changes to your models and you need those changes to be represented in a migration. So we can have a look at what's been generated here. So it's a migration class and we don't need to worry too much about this. It's been automatically generated and you don't often need to edit migrations in Django. But essentially this is a change set for our models. In this case, we've created two models for the first time. So those model names and all of the fields in the models are represented here. And what we can then do is run the migrate command to actually create that database. Now, if we go back to the documentation, there is another command here called SQL migrate. And that will actually show you the SQL code that would be run. So let's copy this code here and go back to the terminal. And I'm gonna paste this in and let me make the terminal bigger here so we can see this. When we execute that command, we can actually see the SQL here that's gonna be executed. And we can see the create table statements for the polls question and the polls choice tables. So if you need to verify the SQL before you run that, you can use the SQL migrate command. What we're going to do now is run python manage.py migrate and that's gonna actually apply the migration. As you can see here, that initial migration from the polls app has been applied. And I'm gonna go back to Beekeeper Studio. Now notice at the moment, we don't have any tables here from the polls application. So for example, at the bottom, we have Django session, and then we have the final table, SQLite sequence. Now after we refresh that, notice we now have two new tables. They are the polls choice and polls question tables. So notice that prefix with the name of the Django app, in this case, it's polls, and that corresponds to what we have here. This is the application name, it's called polls, and the tables correspond to the actual names of the model classes that we defined in models.py. And if we look, for example, at the question table, we can view the data. At the moment, of course, we don't have any data, but we do have the columns at the top, and these are quite small, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. We have the ID of the question, the text, and the publication date, and notice the data type here of date time, and varchar 200. So the actual fields on the model class that we have for the question model have been translated here into underlying columns in the table. And I want to emphasize that connection between the Django model class and the database table and the structure of that table in the underlying database. Now, if we go back to the Django documentation, what the migrate command is gonna do is it's gonna take all of the migrations that have not yet been applied and it's gonna run them against the database, essentially synchronizing the changes you make to your models with the schema in the database. And if you're wondering how Django tracks which migrations have been applied, there's a special table in the database called Django Migrations. Let's go back to Beekeeper Studio and let's try and find that. This one here is Django Migrations. That's what actually tracks the migrations that have been applied so that if you create a new one with the Make Migrations command, 
Django will know that that has not been applied because it's not present in that table. So if we go back to VS Code, let's go back to the terminal that we have here. And if we now run python manage.py migrate, we're going to see this time that there are no migrations to apply. So Django knows that there's nothing changed here in the Django models that we have in this project. So we don't need to apply any migrations at this stage. But for example, if we go back to the models here and we added a new field, we would then have to make the migration, which will create the file on the file system. And then when we run migrate, it's going to pick up that and apply that to the database. So that's the workflow when we are changing models and we want to actually make the changes to the underlying database. It's all well integrated in Django with the model classes and I find that super convenient. I've written Laravel applications where you have to define the migrations yourself and it's not too bad but it can be a little bit tiresome and I think Django has a better way of doing this. So that's all for this video. We've looked at the basics of Django models. And as I said before, if you want to check out the full ORM series, I'll leave a link to that just below the video. And I'll add this particular video to our Django playlist on the introductory tutorial. In the next video, we're going to move on to playing with the models API. And we're going to see how we can actually use these model classes that we've created in order to get data to and from the database. So that's all for this one. Again, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. And if you want to join the channel, if you're finding this content useful, we have opened memberships as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you soon in the next video.